Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Revelation, uh, the seventh chapter. So we begin a, a new chapter this evening. Uh, according to the notes, this is the beginning of lesson 14, although we have been taking more than one week per lesson. Uh, so it's going to seem a whole lot more than that if you go back over the playlist and not yet caught up, I encourage you to start at the beginning. Uh, but let's begin reading verse 1 here. Uh, the chapter is only 17 verses long, so we'll read through the whole chapter, we'll get acquainted with it, and uh, then we'll come back to the beginning and get started uh, into the study itself. Uh, the Bible says, and after these things, so after the six uh, seals have been opened, uh, six of the seven. So after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. <clears throat> of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtalin were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar <coughs> were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor and power and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve Him day and night in His temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the record you've given us uh, of things to, to look for and things that are uh, coming very soon. May these all serve as uh, uh, motivation for us to look for Jesus. And may he come uh, quickly, even as your word tells us to, to seek that. We pray that you meet with us as we study your word. And I pray that uh, he would be even... Uh, revealed even more to us, for we ask it all in His dear and precious name. Amen. All right, so um, we've studied the opening of the first six seals, as I mentioned just a minute ago, and you know, in looking at that, those of us that are saved can say, "Boy, I'm, I'm sure glad I'm saved," and. You know, I remember, let's see, I must have been fourth or fifth grade or so, and uh, I went to a Christian school. It was a small school. Uh, that school only went up to eighth grade at the time. 
uh, later on it was uh, lowered down to sixth grade and then eventually that school was combined with another Christian school and and uh, the classes were not held there any longer but uh, it must have been about maybe about fourth grade or so. And I remember the number 666 coming up and some of my classmates got real scared of that. They got real worried about that. They said, don't say that number. That's a, that's a bad number. That's a, and I said, we don't have to be afraid of that number uh, if we're saved. And these events that are, that are covered in chapter 6 are, <clears throat> are, well, they could be scary events, but not for the saved. As we see these things begin to happen, for those of us that are saved, and, 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 and yes, we know that, that these are not good things, but they point to something wonderful. The most wonderful thing that could happen to a saved person is Jesus returning. And for us to be united with Him, caught up in the air, and the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so I'm not happy that calamities and catastrophes and, and deaths are, are happening and, and that they're going to be happening in much greater numbers. No, I'm not, I'm not happy about that at all. But I'm happy that what that signifies or what that points to is the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so we can say, as Christians, we, we can be glad to be Christians. There is a, a rock to which we can flee. Uh, <clears throat> there is a great, eternal, immovable rock. We... We sing the song Rock of Ages and, and uh, a shelter in the time of storm and uh, there's a refuge and there's a peace and there's salvation and there's victory and there's deliverance and there, there's keeping in that wonderful Rock of Ages. Uh, the, the first six seals cover a lot of territory and, and, and they cover a lot of... The, the time period for the, the Great Tribulation is seven years. And, and so these six seals cover uh, a large amount of territory time-wise as well. And they cover a lot of, uh, uh, there's a, a large generalization of God's judgment on a wicked, unsaved, sin-sick, and sin-cursed world. Now we get to chapter 7, and chapter 7 is divided into two parts. Verse 1 we, begins with this, And after these things... I saw. Uh, and then we go down to verse 9, and it says, After this I beheld. And really it's the same, the same statement. It's just using different words to say the same thing. After this, I saw this. After this, I beheld this. And <clears throat> so the, uh, in fact, if, I'm, I'm told if, if you know Greek, it's, it's the, same, the same phrase. Uh, I know English. And it's saying the same thing. If you look those words up in the dictionary, they're going to give you the same definitions, same meanings. Uh, the first vision has to do with the children of Israel. I remember when we lived in Colombia, from time to time we would have Jehovah's Witnesses show up on, on the front porch and they'd knock on the door and they'd, they'd want to talk to my dad about uh, the kingdom of heaven and, and everything. And he'd say, uh, uh, they would identify themselves as... Uh, belonging to the, the Jehovah's Witness Church, and he said, well, what, what tribe do you belong to? And uh, they said, what do you mean? And he said, well, your religion started teaching that only 144,000 were going to be saved, and so uh, I, I'm assuming you're part of that group because you're out here representing the church. And uh, he said, that 144,000 specifically says it's 12,000 from each tribe of the Israelites, of the nation of Israel. So which tribe do you belong to? And, and they would uh, quickly realize that they were dealing with somebody that was acquainted with the Bible, and they didn't want to talk to him, and they would leave. Um, while that is the original teaching of their founder, once they got to a point where they had more than 144,000 members, they had to change their doctrine. Now, if you have to change your doctrine, then at some point your doctrine is wrong. If it was right before and you changed it, then it's wrong now. If it was wrong uh, before and you changed it, it might still not be right, but it was wrong to begin with, and so it, it's hard to end up somewhere right when you start out somewhere wrong. 
it's hard enough to end up somewhere right when you start out right. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong uh, before arriving at your destination. But you start in the wrong place with the wrong things in the wrong direction, uh, you're not likely to end up in the right location. So I anyhow, so the first vision there is dealing with Jewish people. And there will be, during the tribulation period, 144,000 Jewish people that trust Christ as their Savior. Now the second vision, we get down to verse 9, it says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb. So this is, these are Gentile people, and they're from all over the world. Uh, all the different families and all the different nations and all the different peoples and all the different languages. There's going to be people uh, from amongst them that, that come to know Jesus as their Savior and they're uh, spoken about here in Revelation chapter 7. So let's go back. That, that's kind of the, the overview or the introduction. We're going to spend a little bit of time and, and actually get into the study of the chapter itself now. Uh, verse 1, let's read that again. It says, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, one of the difficult things in studying the book of Revelation is knowing what parts are literal and what parts are are signs. Or what parts are... And, and remember, the, the, the Bible says he, he signified it. Or... If we read that, the, f the first four letters of that are S-I-G-N, sign. And so if we pronounced it sign, it would be signified it. it it's, been, it's been demonstrated by way of a sign. Uh, <clears throat> four is the number of the world. And so here we have a, a fourfold repetition. And so we, we've got uh, four angels standing. We have four corners of the earth. Four quarters of the earth, and that shows the, the universality of, of God's administration. And then again, four angels. And, and so, <clears throat> we won't take the time right now to go there, but I'd encourage you to go back to Daniel chapter 7. And there, the prophet is given a vision, and he sees four winds striving over the mighty sea. And out of the turbulence arises four beasts. And they represent four great empires of the world. So four signifies. Remember, it's a book of signs, or four signifies. That's not the correct pronunciation, but, but that word sign is in the word signified. And, and so this is a book of signs. And so, remember, the Bible says that he sent and signified it. <clears throat> so we have the universality of action, or worldly completeness so in, in other words planet wide it's there's not any part of this world there's not any part of this planet that's not going to be affected by what these four angels are are being told to do so we have four uh, showing the the universality the the four corners of the earth even though the earth is round uh, that's a term that we use the four corners of the earth and to signify all parts of the world. And then we have winds. Uh, <clears throat> so it says uh, the four winds of the earth. Winds are, are symbolic of government controls. Which way is, is the wind blowing today? Which way is the government <coughs> moving things and, and, and the movement that the government, the forces of evil government uh, are, are being referenced here and they're being held and so the angel comes and he gives an order to these four angels he says hold the winds still boy what a, what an interesting thing and, and that's something I'd like to see now at this point remember all the saved people are going to be with Jesus in heaven by then I may not want to watch what's going on down here uh, but right now, boy, what a, I, I sure would love to see some governments just held in check. Uh, Ronald Reagan said that the most frightening words in the English language are, 
we're with the government and we're here to help. And, and really the, the government's job is basically to get out of our way and let us live and let us, let us make a living and to create an environment in which we can do that and protect our country from, from enemies that would keep us from being able to do that. The government has put itself into so many different areas that it really has no business 